I am Dr. Kukun Kumar Dotto. My Christian name is Dr. David Moon. I am working as assistant professor in the Department of Biochemistry and Molecular Biology in Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman Science and Technology University in Gopal Bans, Bangladesh. The title of my discussion is a story of a superpower of the molecular world, a story of my bad and good times with it. Before entering the main discussions, I would better thank firstly some groups who helped me a lot that placed me in the research career. I was fortunate to get the opportunities and environments to grow up and complete my education till MSc in Bangladesh. I was lucky to get the opportunity and all types of supports from the government of Japan for pursuing PhD research in Japan. I was a student in the School of Medicine, Kyoto University, Japan. Kyoto University is one of the most famous educational and research institutions in Japan and in the whole world. Everybody that time needed to qualify in the entrance examination to start doctoral courses in the medical school of Kyoto University. It is said that the entrance examination for the doctoral courses in the School of Medicine is one of the toughest examination of the type. I even found some students to get back to Bangladesh after not succeeding to qualify in the entrance examination. I received an inspiring comment from my supervisor professor. I didn't have to make any request to anybody for any type of favor to make you qualified in the exam. You could pass the exam by yourself. I should mention his name at this point. He was Professor Dr. Koichi Kuda. It is now something of great pleasure that he did his PhD research under the supervision of the famous professor who won Nobel Prize in Physiology and or Medicine in 2018. And his name is Dr. Tasuku Hanjo. Dr. Koichi Kuta also worked for several years with another famous professor in the United States of America. His mentor was Professor Dr. Alvin L. Weisman, who is largely known in today's world as the father of hematopoiesis. I myself was also linked with Professor Dr. Tasuku Honju for minor courses in the Department of Medicinal Chemistry in Kyoto University, Japan. I had to attend all the seminars, lectures, and other activities of his laboratory regularly. At certain point, I could pass his courses because of his kind favor and got free from the obligations to follow all the activities of his department. I had two other minor courses. One of them was radiation biology and oncology. The other was virology, which was connected with the Virus Research Institute. 
it would be a nice it would be nice to mention here that Bharat Research Institute and the stem cell research center are located in very close proximity. The stem cell research center was relatively new facility. I think that you everybody know about Professor Dr. Shinya Yamanaka of Stem Cell Research Center of Kyoto University, who was honored with the Nobel Prize for his landmark scientific works. But my research area was apparently a little bit different from them. I think my research for doctoral degrees was in fact the continuation of the works of another famous professor of the same school. He was Professor Dr. Junji Yodoi, who is very famous around the globe for his contributions in redox biology. Actually, I will not get surprised if someday in future I find his name as a Nobel Prize winner. I did my research works under the direct guidance of another professor, Dr. Shinya Toyokuni. He is also very famous and dedicated in the field of redox biology and disease pathology. He is the immediate past president of the International Society for Periodical Research and the current president of the Asian continent. The main focus of my doctoral research was centered with a particular gene. The gene was the thyroidoxin binding protein 2, TBP2. The same is the same gene is called in different names in different species. In humans, the same gene is called thyroidoxin interacting protein or tixni. It is also known as vitamin D3 upregulated protein 1, BDUP1. I would like to take a chance to say few words out of the continuity of the discussion subject. Cell or an organism is wise to be defined in a collective manner, where each and every single, single component together gives the real meaning. Each and every component is important from some corners and it helps others to meaningful in terms of functions and existences. Besides this pattern, we see something else in our real life. We see someone to work as the president of a country. We see someone to work as the prime minister of a country. We see many ministers who usually keep themselves concerned with about particular sections. We may find similar power distribution in the molecular world inside our body and in other species. We may find some molecule inside our body who may play a role like the commander in C. When we try to address this type of question within the limit of our current knowledge, we usually point our finger to P53 to be the most powerful molecule in a human body. Some scientists also consider P53 as the guardian of the human genome. But it may not be a matter of surprise if we see some other molecule to be explored in future to play much more important roles than P53. Let's back in the mainstream of discussions again. A major part of my doctoral research was to find out the presence of T53 
takes the or TBP2 or VDEP1 in the cellular mitochondria. Nobody tried to check the possibility before that. This was the very first attempt globally. So I tried to reach the same conclusion using different ways and approaches depending on the guidances and helps that I always receive from my supervisors and co-workers. We were lucky from one point that the laboratory of Professor Dr. Junji Yodoi could develop monoclonal antibody against tick snip or TPP2 or BDEP1 at that point. We could do extensive investigations using that precious help. We succeeded to localize tick snip or TPP2 or BDEP1 in the mitochondria of retinal proximal tubular cells. We used immunostaining and electron microscopy in this case to make tick, to make tick snip or TPP2 or BDEP1 visible in the mitochondria. In the second approach, we did the fractionation study. We separate different components after fractionation with satisfactory level of purity. We again found the presence of TXNIP or TBP2 or VDEP1 in the mitochondrial fraction using SDS pace and western blotting. The third approach was to check the interaction between TXNIP or TBP2 or VDEP1 and the thyroredoxin 2 TRX2, which is the mitochondrial form of thyroidoxin 1, TRX1. We were lucky to find physical interaction between TXNIP or TBP2 or VDEP1 and TRX2. The fourth approach was the finding of an unexpected interaction among unexpected interaction between tick snip or TBP2 or VDEP1 and cytochrome C. Depending all these results together, depending all these results, we concluded that tick snip or TBP2 or VDEP1 works in the mitochondria of reactional proximal tubular cells. This was the first attempt internationally to check the presence of tick snip or TBP2 or BDEP1 in the cellular mitochondria. There was no reference articles with this issue at that time. I had to fight a lot to defend the findings till the final presentation for my PhD degree. It may be nice to mention here that we also confirmed the presence of TXNIP or TBP2 or VDEP1 for the first time in both cytoplasm and nucleus using direct Ashia process. We usually see or find lots of discussions with a new discovery in many cases, especially in the scientific world. But unfortunately, my experience was very sad and bad with this. Some openly made doubt about the discovery that I made. Some considered it as a contradictory findings. My doctoral research was published in, a, in the famous science journal Nature. I lived in different countries after my PhD. I always try to keep my eyes with the development in this particular field in our hope to find a supporting article 
from another group in the world. There was a lot of works and discussions with Tick's name or TBP2 or VDEP1 world around. But everybody tried to escape the point of the mitochondrial involvement of Tick's name or TBP2 or VDEP1. Even my own group were strategically reluctant to mention about it in their review articles. The situation used to make me sad silently from inside. But almost after five years, a group in the United States of America published a supporting report in 2009, where they confirmed the translocation of TICSNIP or TBP2 or VDEP1 in the mitochondria under oxidative stress. They could find great importances of mitochondrial TICSNIP or TBP2 or VDEP1. Until 2020, a lot of works have been done around the world and is still going on with great speed and excitement. It is known today that when TBP2 or TICSNIP or VDEP1 translocate in, into the mitochondria, the periodical production gates are regulated, which in turn activate the inflammation complex and eventually start the inflammation. Inflammation stops when TICSNIP or TBP2 or VDEP1 cannot enter the mitochondria. Inflammation plays big roles in many diseases of humans and other animals. It has been reported that TBP2 or TICSNIP or VDEP1 is the central regulator of the aging process and the lifespan of humans and other life forms on this planet. TBP2 or TICSNIP or VDEP1 seems to act as an important determinant of almost all diseases where aging process is involved. It may be wise to mention here that many molecules play important roles in a particular signaling pathway. Sometimes we see different good medications that works targeting different molecules of the same pathway or targeting molecules in a branch-like connections with the main pathway. But whatever is the target molecule of a medicine or a drug, it essentially needs to tackle the main pathogenic element or elements of a disease. One example may be good to mention here, for example, diabetes. TBP2 or TICSNIP or VDEP1 is increasingly evident as the central regulator of diabetes and scientists are trying to find good drugs against diabetes targeting this particular molecule. Different types of medication against diabetes are available in the market today. Those drugs are designed and translated targeting different molecules. But all of them seem to be involved with the activity of TBP2 or TICSNIP or BDEP1 for their efficacy. Finally, I would like to mention one more important role of TBP2 or TICSNIP or BDEP1 that may play a vital role in the treatment and even cure of diabetes someday. Absence of the activity of TBP2 or TICSNIP or VDEP1 is an important factor for the proliferation and regeneration of non neoplastic or non cancerous cells. Anyway, I would like to wish happy, prosperous, and dignified life for you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>